Hello, my name is Ramesh Dungana and I teach physics and astronomy at the University of Colorado. This recording is a shorter version of my previous recording titled Algebra for Physics Students. I'll link that video in the description below. Solving an equation means isolating the object or letter of interest in one side of the equation without losing balance between the sides indicated by equal sign. The process is a lot easier when we remember two rules. I'll talk about these two rules by using an example. This question is asking us to solve the equation for A. To isolate it, we need to move the first term u square to the left side. When we move a term that has a positive sign, or no sign means positive sign, to the other side, it becomes negative. So that is the first rule. Now to further isolate A, we need to move this 2 and S from this side to the other side. The 2 and S are multiplying A. So when we move them to the other side, they will divide everything on the other side and that is the rule number two. Simple. Summarize both of them in one rule. While moving an object or term from one side, the opposite operation must be done. Positive becomes negative, negative becomes positive, division becomes multiplication, multiplication becomes division. So now let's uh, practice them solving another famous kinematic equation for AX. The equation in physics often have subscripts to specify the coordinates. The coordinates are used to specify direction of motion. In this equation we want to isolate the AX. Therefore, we are using rule number one. In this equation, we want to isolate AX. Therefore, we are using rule number one to move the first term from right to the left. After this, we need to move T square and the number two from this side to the other side by using the rule number two. 2 is dividing everything here, so when it goes to the other side, it's going to multiply everything. To represent that, I am putting this parenthesis. It means 2 is multiplying both of these terms. And similarly, t squared is multiplying ax, so when it goes to the other side, it's going to divide. Same rule again. Now, uh, let's... Uh, look at another example. This question asks us to solve for t, but t appears in both terms on the right side. It is not simply t, but t square on the second term. This equation is quadratic in t. Probably you have seen general form of quadratic equation We say this equation is quadratic in T. A general quadratic equation is this. This formula isolates the x from the coefficients. It is also known as formula for the solution of quadratic equation. We can use this formula to solve our equation for t. t in our equation is acting like x in this general quadratic equation. Our equation does not look exactly like this general quadratic equation. So we need to rewrite our equation so that it looks like this. So that after that, we can use 
this formula to solve our equation. I'm writing our equation and general quadratic equation together here. Notice the general quadratic equation has zero on the right hand side. The first term has term containing x square. The second term has simply x and the third term doesn't even has x. To make our equation look like the general quadratic equation, we need to move both terms from right side to the left and rearrange them. First, let's switch side up all the terms using the rule number one. So here you can see I moved this delta x from left to the right and became negative. Similarly, I moved these from left to the right. Now, all the terms are negative, so we can cancel them, or we can say make them all positive by multiplying by negative sign to all the terms. So negative times negative is positive, negative times negative is positive, negative times negative is positive. So all of these are positive. Notice that the result is same as simply switching the sides without changing the sign. You may want to remember what we just discovered. That is, when you change the side of all the terms, you don't have to change the sign because the change gets canceled. Now, finally, we move the delta x to the left using the rule number one. So positive delta x becomes negative delta x. And I also switch the place of these two terms so that the term with the t square appears first. Again, I am writing our equation, the general quadratic equation together. Notice the general quadratic equation has only the positive terms. Therefore, I am putting a negative delta x inside parenthesis here so that I can write positive here and it looks just like this one here. You don't have to do it. Simply remember that the C is negative delta X. Figure out A, B, C for our equation. The coefficient A is the one that is multiplying X square. Therefore, A must be everything that is multiplying t square. Comparison of our equation with the general quadratic equation gives us a is equal to half times ax or ax over 2. Similarly, comparison of the second term here gives us b is bix because b is multiplying x and x for our case is t. Similarly, C is negative delta X. Now we have our A, B, C. So we can substitute these into this equation to get T. Our equation, quadratic equation, and its solution here. And I have also listed the coefficients. Once you get used to it, you can directly go or look at this equation and figure out what the coefficients are and then plug those coefficients in this formula to solve problem like this. Carefully plugging in those coefficients in place. This one has negative b, so I need b. Our b coefficient is bix, so that's why it is negative bix and I'm copying plus minus and now we need b square and b is bix so it has to be square minus I'm copying 4 and now I need a a is ax over 2 and I need c which is negative delta x and to whenever there is negative sign I want to be careful so I want to put that inside the parenthesis it makes a lot of difference. There is 2a in the formula, so 2 is 2, and a 
in our case is again ax over 2 so that's what I am copying when your quadratic equation has numbers for all these coefficients or for some coefficient becomes simple and it is simply arithmetic just a reminder a quadratic equation has two solutions you get one solution by using only the positive sign another solution by simply using the negative sign from here while solving physics problem where object starts from rest the vix in this equation becomes zero so solving this equation becomes a lot easier as you don't have to use the quadratic equation formula let's take a look so when vix is zero the first term becomes zero and I don't need to keep on writing this zero because zero plus something is simply something so this equation simplifies to this so whenever there is something zero I like to plug in that right away but I don't plug in other numbers keep that in mind remember we are trying to solve for t square and t square is multiplied by ax we can move ax to this side so it's gonna divide so that gives us t square now to get t we need to take square root but we cannot just take a square root in one side we have to take square root in both side to keep the equation balanced or equal so after taking a square root what happens t square is simply t and the other side has square root on everything and there is also positive and negative sign indicating that being a square has two possible solutions generally time doesn't have negative solution but if it is velocity for example v it can have both positive or negative values so let's keep that in mind okay folks that's all i have and for more make sure to watch another video other problems solution of other problems watch other video for now happy doing algebra and bye bye